Suppose a dentist walks into a classroom of first grade students and asks, Do you brush your teeth often enough? The students are more than likely going to say yes, because to them, brushing your teeth once a week probably seems like plenty. Now suppose the dentist shows these students the ugly truth about gum disease, plaque, and cavities to scare them into brushing their teeth more often. After a week of the students brushing obsessively, the dentist returns and asks the same question. The students are still going to answer affirmatively, but their yes this week is different than their yes last week because now they know better. The key to seeing growth is to ask, did you brush your teeth often enough a week ago, which will reveal positive gains. This discrepancy is called response shift bias, and it's happening in our physics assessments as well. When we give a survey like the CLAS, we're asking students to report their answers to questions like, do you think physics is useful? Or, do you feel confident that you can do physics? The pre and post results are, at best, flat, just like our example with the students and teeth brushing. But these results are likewise affected by response shift bias. Essentially, the student who takes the survey at the end of the semester isn't the same student as the one who took the survey at the beginning of the semester. If instead we ask the end of semester students what their responses would have been at the beginning of the semester, we see incredibly high gains. And by the way, if we ask the beginning of semester students what they expect their end of semester responses to be, the gains are just as high. So while the CLAS doesn't show very positive gains, the students think they've gained a lot. Now, this does not mean that we should throw out the CLAS, far from it, but don't let its usually negative results set your teeth on edge.